Yeah, so we started Twitch uh, as a place for gamers to hang out, basically, uh, around live video, around the streaming of video games. Uh, uh, and that was seven years ago, a little over seven years ago, that we launched Twitch as a product, although we were working on games for about a year before that. Um, since then, we've launched uh, other verticals that are in interesting to gamers. Uh, we started with Twitch Creative, which is all about streaming the artistic process, whether you were a painter or graphics designer or a musician. Uh, you could stream yourself doing that, uh, whatever hobby that you thought would be interesting for an online audience, um, and build communities around that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of experiment as we go, and, and gaming was a, a great thing that happened for us because it helped us focus down the business on one specific use case, um, help teach us how to talk to our customers, which are creators, learning how to uh, understand them and, and turn what their needs were and their hopes and dreams were into product and revenue opportunities and, and really be able to build a career on our platform. I grew up in New Orleans, uh, lots of music there, lots of different kinds of music that, that there. I mean, I, I grew up listening to lots of jazz, but there was, you know, a lot of punk rock, a lot of ska, a lot of, a lot of crazy experimental music in New Orleans that you could just walk around the streets and find. I mean, music's one of those mediums, I guess, that pervades all aspects of culture, and, and, and gaming is no exception to that. Uh, video game music uh, is as, a, as critical to a game as, as the game itself sometimes, and in, in, in terms of building the culture around it, building the memories around, around, around video games, you hear uh, a song independently of the game itself, and you, you're suddenly nostalgic about a game. Um, and, and certainly many, many games out there have beautiful music and are very thoughtful about how the music interplays with the story, that player experience. You know, we think about how we can work music into the show, um, how we can bring people together around music, maybe that's just at a party, um, but it's, a, it's definitely a big, big part of the culture. Uh, you can't escape it, right? It, and it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing, it's not, it's not something you want to escape. No, not always. I mean, I think, you know, they, they, they certainly think about it and, and there's, you know, very simple ways to approach it where you kind of make your own music or there's very complex ways where like, you know, game companies like Square Enix, Nintendo that have been very like, you know, they, they're experienced in, in game design, but they've always brought music in in, in um, sometimes very like huge ways. Like they'll hire famous composers and writers. They'll build into you know music around entire symphony like actual symphony groups that will make the music for those games versus just creating synthetic music on a computer uh, so there's very different approaches to it Chrono Trigger is one of my favorite games ever made um, and the music I can hear it sometimes you know just sometimes I'll be think just all of a sudden the music will pop into my head um, and it's such a memorable thing you can remember the moments that are happening when a certain song pops into your head or you hear that song uh, but Chrono Trigger certainly um, but yeah, I don't know, Zelda uh, uh, has, has great music, Mega Man has great music as well. Uh, very different kind of music, right? 8-bit, um, um, simple so to speak, but still incredibly memorable. From games, many different things. I think, you know, for instance, recently, within the last few years, you saw this whole genre called Battle Royale kind of appear out of nowhere and suddenly become the biggest genre in the world. I think one thing we see at Twitch a lot is there's this semblance of uh, audience interactive games um, that was kicked off a few years ago, 2014, by a game that was never meant to be audience interactive, uh, which is um, a P Game Boy Pokemon game that um, some a creator plugged in our chat into, so the chat suddenly was controlling this game together, single player game. So since then, games have actually been made deliberately with audience interaction in mind, but that's still very new format for video games and it's a, it's, a, it's a new opportunity for games to be developed that take m many more players that can be actively or a active or passively involved in those games and I think you're going to see a lot of evolution of that over the next few years. So that's really exciting. I think mobile games are really exciting right now because they're becoming more about like interesting deep gameplay um, versus like short term gameplay with like high transaction mechanisms. It's really about actually creating games that are much deeper and much, much longer play times, uh, maybe, maybe even more social or more competitive.